What's up, y'all for crew? Today, guys, we're gonna be taking a look at brake pads. Why do they squeak, and when the heck should I change these things? We got the answers today for you. Have you ever been out riding with your buddy when you hear this? Do you remember how everyone stared at him and said, dude, what's the matter with your brakes? Fix your brakes. It's because your friends are right. You've probably heard this sound before. Reason being, contamination. So, I have some OEM pads here. We're gonna deep dive into contamination. And we're gonna discuss and talk about why you get those horrible sounds just because a little bit of dirt or water or whatever might find you on the track, trail, wherever you're riding on. All right, guys, Gal for USA Tech Ryan here. We're going to kind of go over some of the big things here with contamination and why you get that squealing and squeaking of the brake systems. So, you know, OEM pads here, these are old, you know, you just replaced these. You got brand new pads in here. They look something like this. You went out, you've got a ride or two on them. You bed them in, um, followed the bed in procedure, which you can find on our website. And for some reason, you still got some squeaking of the brakes. Brand new disc, brand new pads. So a lot of the time it's due to contamination, like Clint was saying. Um, that can be due to road grime, dust, dirt, water, debris, all sorts of things getting in between that pad service and rotor service. It could even be from when you were doing the install if you didn't get your hands all the way clean and now you bed some oil into this rotor or pad surface. So the easiest way to start off to combat this is going to be to grab some 500 to 600 grit sandpaper we got right here. Um, and you know, we're not gonna tear up a brand new set, but we'll show you here on the OEM pads. And you're really just gonna to wanna to scuff the surface here. Um, it's gonna take a little bit of time, but you're gonna to wanna to get that surface layer off. Um, you know, the brake pads are very tough material here and the sandpaper isn't, so it's gonna take you a little bit of time on these brake pads to get it down and get that surface layer off. Once you're done with that, we recommend doing the same thing to your rotor here. What that's gonna do is it is going to give you a fresh and clean surface to bed your fresh and clean pads into. Now, I would recommend washing your hands or throwing on a set of gloves to do this so that once you're done, you don't recontaminate the disc and we don't start over again on square one. And really with this, you know, you can cut off a piece, you can fold it in half like this, whatever is easier. And you're just gonna wanna come around the rotor surface like this, you know? Um, sort of the wax on, wax off technique. And you're gonna wanna get it good and even all the way around the rotor. You don't wanna focus on one area. And you're gonna wanna do this until you see you have a, a nice clean rotor surface again. Um, we're gonna hit this one a little bit. We're gonna clean it up. We won't do that on video and waste you guys' time. And then we'll swap back over to the rotor to show you what it should look like when you're done. All right, guys. So right here, I just cleaned a small section so you guys get a glimpse of what it's gonna look like after you do the entire rotor. It's gonna look something along the lines of this right here. You can see you're never gonna be able to get all the pad residue off here, um, but the vast majority is off. So that's gonna give you a good clean surface to mate the new pad into. Um, another good thing to check, guys, is to be making sure that your disc is within tolerance. So um, most rotors are stamped here, like you see this one, minimum thickness, 3.5 millimeters. So if your disc gets too thin, that can cause a lot of problems. It can be susceptible to failure, warping, all that good stuff. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna mic it out. Um, you know, everyone's got a caliper at home and you could probably throw a caliper on the low side of the wave right here. But the problem is if you do a caliper, there's always typically a ridge at the top part of the wave. So it's really hard to get an accurate measurement. So um, a mic works better than a caliper. All right, guys, I don't have a mic with me right now. We got it in the office, um, but I do have a set of calipers out here. So like we were saying, you're usually gonna get a raised lip on the top of the wave here, just cause where the pad sweep surface is. But in the low part of the wave, you can usually get a pretty accurate uh, measurement there. So, you know, we just throw the caliper on, pull it on off, and we're at about four millimeters here. I believe these come stock with about 4.1 millimeters. So this disc is in good condition. It's well above the stamp 3.5 millimeters. So we're good to keep this rotor in service here with it. Um, as we know, OEM stuff works, but it doesn't work great. So we can see this rotor got very hot. We got some heat transfer here going into the arms where the bolts hit here out of the pad sweep area. Um, you can see heat spots in the steel here. So 
Um, it's also got a little warp to it. You know, it's a little bit hard to tell if you guys got warped rotors. If it's a front and it's solid mount, sometimes you can feel it in the lever. It's a little bit harder to feel in off-road applications. But, you know, the reason we could tell on this one is because we actually had the bike on a stand and we spun the wheel and you could actually watch the floating caliper walk in and out. So this one we know has a pretty severe warp to it. Um, if you got a dial indicator at home, you can always throw a dial indicator on it and that'll read in thousandths of an inch. So we're gonna swap this out with one of our rotors here. This is the DF350. That is specifically a Suzuki rear rotor. The reason we're doing this guys is because it's a much higher quality rotor. So you got a laser cut instead of a stamped rotor here. Um, additionally, you have a high carbon virgin 420 stainless steel. This rotor is not. That's gonna give you a much longer life, a much porous, a uh, much more porous surface for these pads to bed into. So you're gonna get much better braking, much better pad adhesion to the contact area as well. Um, you know, it's our patented wave design. We have all these good things going for us when we switch to the Galfa rotor. All right, guys. So we've got the rotor here. We know what we need to do to get rid of the squeaking. Um, now we're gonna actually replace this rotor. So when we take the rotor off, the first thing we're gonna wanna check is these mounting surfaces. We're gonna make sure the mounting surfaces don't have any debris, dirt, corrosion on them. Um, if they do, clean them off really good because obviously if you have something on the mounting surface, your disc is not gonna sit flat on there and it's not gonna work properly. So now we have the nice Galfa rotor here. We are gonna set this guy on. Then we can run the bolts in to the factory re recommended torque setting and we will be good to go. All right guys, we should always have either clean hands or gloves when we're putting these on so we do not contaminate the rotor here. So remember, do as I say, not as I do. Um, <laughs> we're gonna use some little blue Loctite here. I always like to use blue Loctite just because, you know, red is more permanent. I replace discs a lot. Um, I hit them on rocks. We got a lot of rocks out here in Nevada. So I plan on taking this off again and I don't want to pull the threads out of the hub with it. All right, so Ryan nailed it on the head guys. When it comes down to replacing brake pads, um, <clears throat> say we're just gonna replace only pads. You guys spec'd out your rotors are fine. You sanded them down and they look fantastic. Then let's just get rid of the brake pads. So, uh, one of the things with squeaking brake pads too, what you got to remember is whatever is on the surface of these pads is going to embed themselves into the rotor. And that's where another problem lies. So when these pads press down under that level of heat, we're talking really, really, really hot, right? And it embeds the material into the rotor here. Um, sanding it isn't always going to pull out all of that bad material, oil, so after you do give these a good sanding down, uh, isopropyl alcohol, uh, brake cleaner, you know, like the brake cleaner you get out auto parts stores these days is a good choice to get all the oil off of this thing. Um, and that's assuming that your rotor is completely straight. Uh, doesn't have any warps in it. Um, but all boiling down to squeaking 70% of the time is going to come from the pads. And so it's very important you guys change these things out. When you start to hear the howling and the squeaking, you could try to give them a little bit of a sanding like we did on this. And uh, sometimes we'll bring them back. So after you sand them, spray them with some brake cleaner, really pull any oils or debris out of the surface of this pad, and then put them back in. And that should fix your problem nine times out of 10. That other 10, well, that's gonna be your rotor. So for today, guys, we got rid of some OEM junk though. We got it all dialed in with some brand new Galfer equipment here at Galfer USA. Guys, thank you so much for watching today. Make sure to click subscribe. We got a lot of videos that come out regarding brakes. Obviously, it's kind of what we do best. Lots of different vehicles uh, that we try them on, test. And uh, guys, a lot of really cool stuff coming from us in the future here. So make sure you subscribe. Drop a comment down below. We check them every now and again. We definitely, if you have any questions, we'd like to address those questions that you have. And then lastly, uh, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and now on TikTok. So yeah, we jumped on the whole TikTok bus because it's a future apparently. So we're on TikTok now. So anyways, guys, that's going to do it for now. So from Galfer Studios, thank you so much for stopping by today. And we'll see you on the next one. Peace out.